back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here with my good friend, Corey Kirkland. Hello. We're going to call him Captain Kirk from now on. Uh, he, uh, he has a star date log, uh, captain's log, whole deal. Oh. And uh, anyway, today we're going to be talking about <laughs> Boucher guitars. We're going to actually be talking about this <laughs> SG42V right after this. Well, we are back one more time, and like I said, glad to have Corey in here with us, uh, first day of filming, and we picked out uh, two great guitars to do reviews on yeah, already to start with, and uh, now we're going to talk about this Boucher. Um, this guitar didn't actually get to even exist in our store. Uh, it actually never made the store, uh, which is a really cool story. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you all for joining us, and uh, if you have not done so so far, please put the uh, push the little subscribe button as well as that bell so you'll be notified every time we come live or if we just re release a new video you'll know about it uh, as soon as well just as soon as anybody can so uh, do that also please comment down below we love to interact with y'all and hear what you guys have to say about some of this i especially love the uh, extremely mean comments uh most of them coming from Corey. Uh, Corey has an alter ego account where he continually berates me online and i appreciate that too Corey. thank you you're welcome <laughs> anyway. that's what i'm here for i'm doing my best <laughs> As always, we do have a just a tone sample at the end of the video, and there's a link down below that gets you directly to that, so you do not have to listen to the ramblings of John and whoever happens to be sitting next to him because he likes to ramble a lot. We also have a complete performance using these two guitars uh, that you will see. It is a massive amount of notes known as Ride the Wild Turkey, and there is a link down below to get you to that video so you can hear the guitars in their glory playing off of each other and doing all that kind of great stuff. So, now that I got that out of the way, Corey, aren't mahogany dreadnoughts great? They are wonderful. <laughs> They're my favorite things on the planet. Corey has, uh, is newest in the shop, uh, and this is his first day filming. And Corey, you had just a couple of guitars before you came mm -hmm. in here, and now he wants to buy them all now that he's working in the yeah. shop. Too much reference. They're, yeah, it's one of those learning things. learning too much. Yeah, it's one of those things that's it's good about being in a, in a guitar store is mm -hmm. that you get to play tons of great guitars. Uh, the bad part is you want all of them. And yeah. I am definitely in that category. Corey keeps looking at me. In fact, yesterday he told me, why do you have all the good guitars? Because I can't seem to let them go. <laughs> when they come in here, I don't want to let them go. And, and my wife doesn't know how much money I spent. So I hope she's not subscribed. <laughs> she might be. She, she might be live she right now. She might be there right now. Anyway, she'll um, be in the comments. <laughs> we're talking about uh, Boucher guitars. Boucher came to us uh, about three years ago. Uh, I had been seeing some of their guitars uh, with players that were great out there, um, and I didn't know much about them. But I uh, found out that they are built in Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, up in Quebec which is great when I get phone calls from up there because they have that French accent and sometimes I actually know what they're saying to me. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. But uh, build some absolutely fabulous guitars. Uh, we've gone through these before. If you have not looked at some of the older videos on Boucher, there's some really good information there about them. Mm -hmm. um, but they like to name their guitars after geese. And I don't know why. In this particular case... Might be a goose problem in Canada. <laughs> there is a goose yeah. problem in Canada. It's or people, at least that region People run around behind everybody and just keep goose... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That might be it. That's how they get their guitars out quicker. <laughs> What's done? I don't know if this is going to make the video or not, but if it does, good for it. you guys. Um, well, no, they do uh, label all their stuff in a goose heritage of uh, Canada. This particular one is a studio goose, but it has been modified just a little bit. This is an SG42V, um, giving it a little bit of different characters. Now, originally, uh, they had a Bluegrass Goose series for the Dreadnoughts as well as the, uh, the Studio Goose. The big difference was a Studio Goose had an inch and three quarter nut width and it had a different shaped peg head. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the biggest ones. There actually is a couple other differences including sound hole size which I just found out recently. This one actually has a standard sound hole size where the Bluegrass Goose is slightly uh, bigger, a little bit uh, more open. Um, but recently the bluegrass goose has now been changed to an inch and three quarter. So when we originally ordered this guitar, we ordered one of these a while back, 
It was in the vintage pack. What that gained you was the inch and three quarter nut width, as well as a squared peg head. The other cool thing that it also gave you was what was in their gold pack, which was a thermo cured Adirondack spruce top. Yeah. So this is kind of like a hybrid in there. Now there is some differences there. Uh, now that they've changed the bluegrass goose, there's, you know, you can do a gold pack. Bluegrass goose get a lot of the same stuff. It'll be obviously an already squared peg head, but it will have the different sound hole. Yeah. But there is one major difference. I learned this just yesterday. Um, setups. Studio Goose from the factory is set up a little bit lower where the Bluegrass Goose is a little bit uh, higher so that we can pound them on them the way we do when we bang on these guitars, Corey. Yeah. You, you have almost as heavy of a hand as I do. We just... Um, also set up with 12 gauge strings or lights instead of the 13s or mediums. Uh, those are kind of the biggest differences. That said, fabulous guitar. Uh, Excellent we guitar. have not yeah. been disappointed yet. Everything Boucher makes is like some of the best things I've ever played in my life. They're fantastic instruments. Now they do a couple things that I find to be really interesting. Um, they have one of the most interesting headstock connections here with this more rounded yoke area up here. Mm. And it's extremely comfortable in the hand. It is kind of shaped to fit your hand, um, especially if you're in first position. It makes really easy, more comfortable spot here to kind of get almost behind the nut a little bit Do you more. think that would interfere with a uh, capo? Have I have tried a capo, no, I don't think it does. Because again, with the Studio Goose, this is such a uh, uh, kind of a modern depth. It's not very mm -hmm. beefy in here. And I don't think you would have too much problems. Even okay. if you did, um, you have so much space in here, you could still collar that and kind of come at, we're talking about the cradle style capos, mm -hmm. at a little bit more of an angle. I think it would still fit very, very well. Obviously it won't go past that lip uh, very it. easily. So. Uh, there's that. Uh, other thing on this guitar, it is a mahogany guitar, like we said before, in a 42. Uh, the maple uh, binding uh, and also herringbone on this particular one, which uh, just looks attractive. I always did like the character of herringbone on mahogany. I know it's traditional to do it with rosewood, yeah. but it is really cool. Herringbone is just cool. Yeah, it just is cool. on everything. On everything. Everything. Put it on my car. <laughs> Yeah, I see it. He's running a Honda Civic with herringbone. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. He's gonna get those lights, the tail lights too, that come with like the yeah. you know Chevron uh, herringbone. It's a couple extra direction. horsepower, but it, it pays off. <laughs> Anyway, extremely beefy, uh, very punchy so uh, sounding guitars. We were talking about the two different ones that we have right here, where Gallagher tends to be a little bit more rounded. This has more of that modern shimmery tone, um, a more modern take on a traditional sounding guitar. And I think that's what we found with a lot of the Boucher guitars is it has a lot of the big characteristics that most people are looking for in those traditional yeah. pre-war type of guitars, but it has that modern twist at the at the other end of it, which is a brighter, which is really punchy, really, Very really three-dimensional sound. Yeah. yeah. And so, Sounds you great. know, if you're thinking that you kind of are in between that, you know, tonal properties of the, you know, modern sound versus a, uh, a more vintage sound, this is probably a really good choice for you to kind of uh, go into. Again, workmanship impeccable. Boucher just yeah. does a wonderful job. Uh, they are really big into doing the gold packs or thermo curing because they were one of the first uh, guitar builders doing so. Uh, so they really do uh, a great job at that. The color looks great. Um, one thing that was commented quite often uh, as we had this around the shop is they don't stain their mahogany. So it's in that more natural state. It's more of a lighter color, uh, which is, you know, if you're used to the uh, Martin look where they do stain it and give it a darker color, it's more similar to that, and that's even lighter than a lot of manufacturers do. This is more the natural color of the mahogany uh, without a stain in it. So again, giving it a little bit different character. Yeah. Uh, obviously doesn't make a difference in the sound. Great voicings to these guitars. Playability is great. Truly, I would say yeah. that if you are wanting that vintage sound, or the vintage look uh, that they come out with the SG 50, uh, 42 52Vs, then um, this gives, the setup is a lot lower. It's like you said, a little bit more of a lighter type of setup. Um, if you're wanting that beefier, uh, heavier handed type of setup, that's where you would definitely want to probably lean on the BG, BG 52 or Bluegrass Goose. Yeah. Um, so 
I love the name. I think it's a good name. Yeah, the Bluegrass Goose, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the next Canadian all-star bluegrass band. The Bluegrass Goose or the Geese or the Geeses. <laughs> I'm not sure which it would be, but it's going to be one of those two. Anyway. Gooseys. <laughs> the Gooseys. <laughs> This is a bad pairing. We're just going to sit here and giggle with each other. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we, did, we did some cool songs. Yeah, we, did, we did all right. Anyway, great sounding guitar. Um, definitely something you want to check out. Again, I'll go through the specs for you real quick. It does have an ebony bridge, a smaller shaped bridge, by the way, uh, so it takes a little bit less mass on the top. Uh, ebony bridge, ebony fretboard, non-bound uh, on this fretboard, uh, bone nut and saddle, of course. It is a thermo-cured Adirondack spruce top. I believe it's a quad A level. Uh, mahogany back and sides, uh, two-piece back on this particular one. And again, with the vintage pack squared peg head, as well as that thermo-cured top. Um, just a great sounding mahogany dread. Here's the deal. This guitar, it already sold. It sold before we even unboxed it. Somebody called us and said, hey, I heard you were getting a SG42 V and I would like to have it. So we didn't even get a chance to receive it. This is the first time getting to play it and kind of uh, get to know it. Uh, you got a great guitar. And we do have more of these coming in uh, on order so you can check those out as well. So be looking for that. Um, so anyway, what we'll do right now is kind of give you a tone sample so you can hear exactly what it sounds like. appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite one we've made so far. We've, we've done hundreds of videos and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's gonna be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms, they're everywhere. They permeate the internet and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos and it sees how much you comment and then it pushes this to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the, the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you on the next video.